Good afternoon everyone and a very warm welcome to our wheel throwing porcelain dinnerware class. What a long name. But yeah, we know that we're here to learn to do dinnerware on the wheel. There are different ways to open it up. You can use a finger, you can use two thumbs, or you can use one thumb. That's normally the way that I like to do. I'm also showing you how to create some tools of your own. Once again, making sure that I have that little bit of a shadow sitting there. Uh, when I do workshops, I normally request that they put out a little, um, basically a plank on this one side and another one on the other side so that I have some room where I can put my tools down and also so that I can have room where I can put some of my pieces down especially if you do production work since I'm right-handed my wheels gonna go anti-clockwise we're basically forming this one we we have the belly coming out making a longer lip porcelain do not allow that. Uh, remember the open structure that I was talking about? She soaks in too much water too quickly. I kind of call her that she's addicted to water. I am cutting half of this clay away so that you can get an idea. So note, if I can get the camera to follow my fingers right there, the dominant hand sits lower and I pushed it out it's a template that I've created that's got different lines on it. I used this one also in the hand building porcelain class and I will show you how to make this. Note that I'm using my fingers instead of the sponge because um, I don't need any more water. I like to use this one sometimes with a saucer underneath it and we will discuss saucers later on when we get to the plates. Uh, but it's also kind of the equivalent of this cup that we've made during the hand building uh, porcelain dinnerware class. And basically what you're going to do here, it's almost like throwing off the hump, except that you're just making one single piece here. Before we call it a day, I would like to discuss a few practical things about drinking vessels with you. On the other hand, this would have been wrong to try and make a foot rim underneath this piece. Draw on it and let's see if where and how we need foot rims. I think we're going to try this one and see what we think about it. Make the handle at the same time. What you do is you can place them if you want to get your handles at even sizes. This is a little craft um, brush but you know regular makeup uh, I make up tools will also work the, the ones with the little foam on it and then it's a matter of lifting it off and putting it right next to the rest of the pieces. If it cracks at this stage it's still okay because you can fix that crack. One final time. It is the neatest thing to start making tools but be aware it may become addictive. I've just started out with a plain straight ball and it could have been completely straight like this. That scar will show up in translucency. It will make a dark shadow. So if I would bring this over to this one that's been fired out completely because I want to make sure that I do not end up with any S cracks on it. That means that we're going to end up with a mug that's about four inches tall. Because it's lifting itself up, it's actually becoming taller. For the camera's sake, we're doing it from a different angle. And what I'm physically doing is I'm pulling the clay towards me. You know that we know that we need to stop when we need to stop, right? And this is what I know. I have to stop right now. And I don't want a lot of texture there. 
simply because I want to be able to scoop my pie nicely from there. There's two things that we still need to discuss. We need to discuss the cracking at the bottom of your pieces and we need to discuss delamination. The clay is nice and soft so I can show you that line right there. And this on the plaster bed is the way that I'm going to put it aside over on the shelf for the moment. And since we have a wall on that side and a wall on that side it is safe to move between the two lines. These plaster beds fit right in there. Those are all ingredients that's been added to a porcelain clay body to make it easier to work with, to increase the plasticity and prevent it from being too short. And um, note that I'm using these words so that you can get used to them if you're not familiar with them yet. Now remember it is going to shrink but I want for you to note we're going into a 30 degree angle there. I've prepared this page to um, show you what I mean and how it's going to be implemented when we talk about casseroles. The problem is you have to fire any lid that you put onto a porcelain piece, you have to fire the two together to make it fit together. Lid and bowl. We're going to trim them some other time. Let me show you an artsy piece that I've made in a similar fashion in the past. One of the reasons why I prefer this one above this foot rim is because that is a very very possible chip that's going to happen. There is a good bit of fun in making and mixing up glazes. That's what transparent glaze should look like, not like it is on my fingertips. Why would I do that? It's easy for me to just take my sponge and clean it up and I will show you about that in a second. This one will be a little small so I think we need a nice old big one in this very same fashion and we need a ladle so that we can serve the soup from there. What about a stew?